Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. Hope you guys had a good holiday. The new year is, is approaching very, very fast and I just wanted to get one more tutorial in before the new year starts. So I hope everybody's doing really well. I originally wanted to do this tutorial on how to put together the enclosure as a part two for this cool project of the LED NeoPixel Ring headphones, but I came across a kind of problem that I needed to address in this tutorial. So this is the original enclosure and it is, you know, it's a two piece thing and um, it's just the cover here just snaps onto the, the enclosure. But uh, a lot of the times this happens, right? Your, their tolerances are tight for the first couple of days and then after a little bit, a single bump to the enclosure will just cause the thing to fall apart. And that really, really sucks. So I was thinking, you know, what's a good way to do this? And the best way uh, I think we'll be able to do is to do a twist top using the thread features in Fusion 360. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make a simple cylinder. We're gonna make a little twist top using the, uh, the threads. And I haven't seen uh, too many people do that yet. Uh, at least when I searched on YouTube for this type of tutorial, I didn't find anyone using uh, the threads feature. Uh, for that. So I think it'd be a good idea to, to try it out here and see if it works. I'm actually 3D printing it right now. So hopefully the only thing that I can see is the tolerances will be too tight, but we'll, we'll get to that and we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with, of course, a circle. So I'll click on the circle tool and select the floor plane. And then I'm gonna start off with a 50 millimeter radius and hit okay. And I'm gonna make another radius, which is gonna be sort of the outside of it. Make it 54. There. Now I have our two circles in one sketch. Hit stop sketch. And I'm gonna start off with probably the top. Let's start off with the top. So I'm gonna select both of these uh, features of the sketch, hit E on my keyboard for extrude, and extrude it to one millimeter. And turn off my analysis. I don't need that right now. I'll, get, I'll go over that later in a little bit. So I got that part. Okay, so there's my first top piece. And I need to make the, the, uh, the lip area. So I'll bring back this. And then I'll extrude just this piece out and make it four millimeters. Just like that, hit okay. Okay, now I need to make a shell here. So I'll select this face and hit the shell button. And I want it to be two millimeters, okay? So there we go. You notice this face feature here is a little bit off. So what I can do is I can hit uh, Q on my keyboard for pull and I can create a new offset using the offset type and bring this down just by one millimeter. That way it's flush with uh, the outside of the lip here. So okay, so now we have that. So now we have our top. And the next thing I'll do is I'm going to uh, just move it up a bit. Let's hide my origins for a minute. Just click on that. And I will set the pivot to in the center of it like that. Hit done. Move it up by 10 millimeters. Like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a thread to the outside of the of the lip cylinder thing. So I'm going to click create, and click on thread, and then you got some things here. So the first thing we need to change is uh, this isn't going to be selected probably. So I make sure that model is selected so I can see it. Uh, full length is probably going to be selected for this for this area. I do want it to be full threaded. And uh, the thread profile that we're using for this one is, is isometric. The size is 50. And then I'm gonna change the design from 1.5 to two, because I want two threads, just two. And then everything else is just fine, so I'll hit okay. So now we have our thread with our, with our twist top thread part. So now we should be able to twist this into the next part that we're gonna make. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide that body, bring back the same sketch, and pretty much do the same thing. So I'm gonna go like this, one millimeter, hit okay. But then instead of bringing this part, I'm gonna bring this part in. So I'm gonna click uh, extrude, E, bring it up to 10 mil, till min millimeters, and then change the operation from cut to join, hit okay. All right, so now if we bring back that, you'll see that we have this, the top part and this part. So I wanna be able to see through this, right? So I'm gonna click, uh, right click, and then go to use, uh, physical material. So I can add a glass that's under the glass thing. I'll just drop it on the part that I want, which is this one, and then hit close. And now I can see through it and see that there's a thread on the top, but not on the body yet. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So to do that, I'm going to hide the sketch. We're going to go back to thread under create and then click on that area. And now it's creating a thread throughout the whole thing. So if we, if we, if we uncheck this full, full length, we get an area here. We get a, we get a, manip a manipulator and we can pull this down uh, or enter a number here. So it needs to be four because that's the length of our thing. And our stuff's already set. So it's already 50. We have two threads, isometric profile. So that's all good. So I'll hit OK. And then pretty much that's it, right? So if I reveal both parts, now let's take a look here. You're going to see that it's actually conflicting here a little bit. At first, I would think that, oh, no, this is wrong. It's not going to work. But if you use the Move tool, let's move this piece, and then actually start rotating it, you can actually get it to, to the right spot. So let's take a look here. If I put 0, nothing's moving. If I put 100, you can see it's starting to move. So why don't I put 140? It's right and it's right on it's right in where it needs to be. So I'll hit OK. And you, we can take this another step further. So if you go to inspect and you click on selection analysis, we can see right through, uh, right through our model. Uh, when I clicked on se selection uh, or, or selection, uh, when I clicked on uh, section analysis, um, you have to select an origin. So you can pick this one. To go on the opposite end, then hit OK, and then you can always come back to it like this here. You get a new folder here that, that shows up, and you can you can select through these two different ones. So it looks pretty good. There's a distance of um, 0.2 millimeters, which is exactly what uh, 3D prints like. 3D printers. So I can select I to inspect this and this right here, and it'll say the minimum distance is 0.22. So that's pretty good. So I think this is going to work, hopefully. Obviously, there should be a distance here and here, but you know, we'll see how this works out. There's, a, I think there's enough wiggle room for this to work. So I'm printing these two pieces out right now. And um, when we come back, uh, I'll show you guys the results and see if everything works. We only did a couple of steps here. Um, but yeah, this is a good, hopefully this is a good way to, uh, to make uh, this type of enclosure so it just doesn't pop out. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the print and see uh, how it fares. Okay, and we're back. So here it is, 3D printed, already assembled. Let's take a look at this. I can just turn it and it's two pieces. Oh my God, I'm so very happy that this worked. The tolerances work out very well. I can just screw that in, make it a very tight fit. And this thing is not coming apart. You know, the only edit you'll notice is that it's actually only four millimeters tall which makes it really five millimeters tall because there's an extra little one millimeter for the for the, the sort of lip thing but that's all i did i just modified the height of it so i didn't have to wait so long to 3d print it i printed it in one go uh the two parts on the bed which i'll show you so let's take a look again at the cad this is what the update looks like it's just a very shortened down version of what we created and with the analysis you can really see that the when you're using the threads uh, feature it does a very nice job of doing the tolerances for you. We did that analysis thing and did an inspection and said it's uh, 0.22 millimeters of, of clearance, which is perfect. Works really well. Here it is in Simplify 3D. I actually sliced this with uh, 1.15 millimeters. That's 150 microns. Uh, so that was probably pretty important. So make sure you guys uh, print it at that resolution. Here's what it looks like. The infill was about 10%. There really isn't much infill. You can see around in that area there. That's how it works out. But if this printed with no support materials. Um, in one go, it took about one hour to print both pieces, but that's relatively quick uh, for something like this. And I'm really surprised that it worked out again. Um, so there you have it, folks. That's how to make a little twisty top uh, enclosure box type thing it's not really a box but you know it's a cylinder uh, so that's pretty much it I'm going to go ahead and incorporate this design into the enclosure for the headphones and then do that next week but that's pretty much it um, happy new year guys uh, it's been a really good year for me I hope you guys had a really good one too if you guys have any questions any feature requests or anything like that let me know in the comments below so I can get on that but uh, I guess until next year, folks, I'll see you next week, of course. But until next year, remember to keep on a cadden. 
I'll see you guys later. Thank you.